Mike Kavanaugh with Hero News. I'm here at the HRC Celebration, and Alcoa is going to be the awardee for this year's gala. How do you feel about that? We're excited about it. We're celebrating our 125th year anniversary, and this sort of caps the 125th year in no other way. And tell me what about some of these initiatives. It's amazing what your company has done. I'm really, I got goosebumps actually what, listening to you speak. Sure. Well, I mean, our whole strategy towards LGBT equality is sort of three-pronged. It believes that we have to make inroads inside the corporation, we have to make policy advancement, and we have to engage the community. And we really believe that we have a responsibility to the LGBT community so that we create equality where our employees are invested. I think that's amazing. I wish that more companies would be like that. Congratulations. That's awesome. And you, sir, head of corporate relations, tell us, you know, all these victories happening. I mean, it gives us so much hope. Again, I got goosebumps listening to you. Tell me why this is so a, ha a happy point for you. Well, it's such a historic moment now with 13 states who have marriage equality, but 13 out of 50 is just the beginning of a long path. So I think we have a, a long road ahead of us. HRC is committed to making sure that we mobilize people on the ground, get the right companies recognized for their great work, and uh, hopefully change so that we can have equality for all Americans. That's okay. okay, so listen, I need you all to come to the gala. How can we get tickets? February 8th, you can go to hrcgreaterny.org. So please, if you can't make the event, which is going to be fabulous, I've been to it before, we'll be covering it, please make a huge donation. They can do that at the website, and you'll get to see this very handsome man receive this award <laughs> on behalf of this amazing company. This is Mike Kavanaugh signing off from the HRC uh, event, and we are so happy and proud that you are part of our community. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And so I am Maria Fasulo, and this is Chan Panette, Martin Cowan, and we are your co-chairs for this year's HRC Greater New York 2014 Gala. So now I'm going to turn things over to Greg Battaglia and Rob Hornack our corporate committee co-chairs. I hope to see all of you at the big event in February, February 8th. Greg and Rob, come on up. Good evening. I'm Greg Battaglia. HRC's mission is to end discrimination against LGBT people and to realize a nation that achieves fundamental fairness for all people. As you know, it's been an amazing year for equality. One year ago in this very room, we talked about the resources HRC was putting behind the November ballot fights in Maryland, Maine, Minnesota, and Washington State. It was our priority to win at least one. Well, we ended up winning all four. <laughs> Plus, we helped elect Tammy Baldwin as the first out member of the U.S. Senate. <laughs> these, uh, these successes really started the year, uh, but they received an appropriate bookend this summer when we had the U.S. Supreme Court ruling favorably on two historic cases, one striking down California's Proposition 8, and the other confirming what we knew all along that the Federal Defense of Marriage Act is unconstitutional. Woo! Yeah. Awesome. awesome. And of course, HRC does not stop there. We're continuing to work with agencies in DC and across the US to ensure that implementation of these key decisions is felt by LGBT Americans as far and wide as possible. One of the most dramatic effects of the victories of the past year is how we now have two different Americas for LGBT citizens. Living in some states, LGBT Americans are afforded the same exact privileges and protections as others, from marriage equality to workplace and housing discrimination laws. But just by something as simple as crossing a state line, protection from discrimination and even, fund and even fundamental relationship recognition, often it just simply evaporates. So a big priority for HRC is to focus energy and resources on those areas in the country where the fight is harder and where our efforts are critical to creating one America with liberty and justice for all. 
When we invited our next speaker, we thought that he might speak to us about what might happen in New Jersey. But as you've seen, things are moving pretty quickly. <laughs> so, to talk about what lies ahead for the rest of the country, please welcome HOC's National Field Director, Marty Rouse. <laughs> President Chad Griffin and the gubernatorial candidate in Virginia, Terry McCullough. Uh, HRC invited all of our members in Virginia, over 30,000 members in Virginia, and all of our members in Washington, D.C., on a call tonight to hear from Chad, to hear from Terry McCullough, and to hear from me about the work that HRC is doing to mobilize our members and supporters in this very important election that's taking place in two weeks from today. We have an election in Virginia that has national implications. We have on the Republican side, where normally there's Republicans that are friendly and fair-minded, but in Virginia this year, no. <laughs> Ken Cuccinelli running for governor, the lieutenant governor candidate, the attorney general candidate, all of them are anti-LGBT in a very big way. And on the other side, we have Terry McCullough running for governor, a lieutenant governor candidate, an attorney general candidate who support equality and support marriage equality. It is the first time in HRC's history that we have endorsed an entire statewide ticket, governor, lieutenant governor, and attorney general. It's that important because the lieutenant governor breaks ties and the state senate is currently tied. <laughs> the attorney general decides whether or not the Defense of Marriage Act in Virginia will be, um, how it will be implemented and supported, or if it's the Democrat that's been elected, he will decide not to, not to support that. And so it's very important that we elect a governor, <laughs> lieutenant governor, and an attorney general. And that's why HRC is mobilizing our members like never before. We have eight field organizers all across Virginia. In just two months, our eight organizers and the volunteers in Virginia have made over 40,000 phone calls and knocked on over 14,000 doors all across Virginia. <clears throat> So, if you don't remember anything else that I say tonight, please tonight go home and tomorrow and contact anyone that you know that lives in Virginia or that lives in D.C. and urge them to volunteer on the campaign. It's going to be a very, very close election, not according to the polls today, but we know that it's going to be extremely low turnout. People are turned off by the negativity in these ads, and we need to make sure that we educate our supporters to let them know that if the Republican ticket wins in Virginia, we will be sent back even further in that state. We have to go far. It's a very, very important election, and that's why HRC was on the call today with Chad Griffin and Terry McCullough mobilizing our members, and I'm very proud of what they did. Now, I was all ready to talk about how our plan, at least a few months ago, was to, you know, we heard about the wonderful victories in November, we won all four, Right? And now we have marriage equality in 13 states, up 14 states, thanks to New Jersey. So, <laughs> we have been saying for a while, our job is, and it's really possible for us to win four more marriage states by the end of this calendar year. Well, we got one already, now we got three more to go. And what three are those? Those are Hawaii, Illinois, and New Mexico. And what I want to share with you tonight is to let you know the lay of the land, what HRC is doing about it, and the road ahead. So the lay of the land right now is we have these three states. And I want to tell you, I'm the field director, I'm particularly proud that HRC has boots on the ground in Hawaii. It's a hard job. <laughs> <laughs> but they are going door to door on Maui, on Oahu, knocking on doors, talking to voters, and having them contact their legislators to support a marriage equality. This has never, ever happened in Hawaii history. No one has ever gone to the door knocking on support for GLBT issues. HRC working with the coalition in Hawaii and Iverns on the ground in Hawaii. The governor has called a special session on October 28th. That's a Monday. By that Friday, November 1st, we should have marriage equality in the state of Hawaii by November 1st. So that hopefully be number one. Go the next week. The next week we return to Illinois. Illinois, there is a veto session this week, and there's a veto session the week of November 5th. 
we fully expect that the Illinois legislature is going to take up the marriage equality bill the week of November 5th. So either November 5th, November 6th, or November 7th, we expect a marriage equality vote in Illinois. Hopefully that'll be that number 16. Now, what is HRC doing in Illinois? The wonderful work of HRC, I'm a field guy, we love to put people on the ground, but the beauty of the human rights campaign is we're able to tap into the whole network of HRC and the expertise that we have on the ground. So yes, we give money, yes, we put bodies in, but we also mobilize the relationships, we develop relationships, and it's, it's, it's wonderful in, in Illinois what's happening. We have worked with African American clergy in Illinois, developed those relationships over time, and have been able, because of that relationship that we've developed, and that trust and relationship, we have been able to get African American clergy members to come out and support marriage equality. Not just to say they're gonna support it, but they actually came and testified in support of the bill. HRC worked with them to have them testify. They actually had a press conference last week announcing their support for marriage equality. Just this morning, um, Chad Griffin was on a call calling key voters in Illinois, having them be able to patch through their legislature. HRC has these relationships and is mobilizing them, and we hope, and we hope that they'll be history made in Illinois because we are strategic and mobilizing African American clergy to allow the African American Democratic Caucus that we don't have all the votes that we should have, hopefully they will vote in support of marriage equality the week of November 5th. Again, strategic partnerships and developing relationships is very, very important, and that's what HRC does. And the next state I want to talk about is New Mexico. New Mexico, for those of you who have been paying attention, I suppose most of you pay attention, um, half the state now is allowing marriage to take place in their counties. About eight or, nine, eight or nine counties allow marriage equality, representing over half the state. So in half the state of New Mexico, you could go to your county clerk and get a marriage license. In the other half, you can't. So all the county clerks have said to the state Supreme Court, please decide this for us. Can we get married or can we not allow marriage to happen in New Mexico? There's a hearing later this month, and we fully expect by the end of the calendar year, the state Supreme Court is going to rule in favor of marriage equality in New Mexico by the end of this calendar year. So hopefully that will be state number 17 by the end of 2013. Oregon is hopefully going to be the first state in our country that actually goes to the ballot affirmatively to repeal a marriage ban that was passed in 2004 and replace it with a marriage law. They're collecting signatures now. HRC is part of a coalition in Oregon, and we are helping to collect signatures. If they collect over 160,000 signatures by June of next year, it'll be on the ballot. Again, first state in the country, hopefully, to vote to repeal a marriage ban and replace with marriage. That would be 2014. And what I'm very excited about Oregon, for this crowd at least, is to let you know again these relationships. What HRC is doing, as many of you, you know, thanks to Dina Fadas and others, is we are working with corporate America. And we are working with corporate America to mobilize corporate America strategically to come out in support of certain laws that are coming forward, either the Employment Non-Discrimination Act or even marriage laws. And in Oregon, one of our HRC organizers actually worked with Adidas. And Adidas came out last week and announced their support in Oregon for the marriage equality uh, law in Oregon. And that's huge because that's what Adidas USA is headquartered in Oregon. <laughs> So again, it's how HRC is being smart and strategic and using the resources, and I want to inform you of that. So where are we going from here? Everything is wonderful, you know, another state, another state, another state, it's just fabulous, right? Coming up, it's just great to drive and take the train past New Jersey and feel differently about New Jersey because we've been married there now. I'm a New Yorker, right? We all know. So. Um, but each state is unique, and each of, these, each of these states really is not easy to do, and I can't talk about them at length, but I've worked in a lot of these states, and I want you to know that Winning marriage equality in the state is not easy. It's not easy for a legislator to vote yes, especially for a Republican legislator to vote yes, because they're really threatened with primaries. HRC does a lot of strategic work to make it as easy as possible for these legislators to do the right thing, and they work really strategically and win in the ballot box when no one thought we were gonna win. We were four for four last year, and HRC was the largest investor in all of those campaigns. So we're very smart and strategic. But what I wanna share with you is that while you are here in New York, and there's 13 other states that have marriage equality now, as was mentioned before, we sort of are in a, a world where it is two Americas. There are all these states where we have equality, and you can walk down the street with your partner, you can get married and all that. But there are states still in this country, in the United States of America, where if you put a picture of your partner on your desk, let's just say you live in Cincinnati, and you go and get married in New York, and you come
come back and you put the picture, your wedding picture on your desk at work, you can be fired because of that picture on your desk. And so HRC has to find a way to take the energy and the excitement of our victories, mostly on the coasts, and now, you know, in a little bit in Minnesota and Iowa, and soon to be Illinois, we need to take that energy and somehow keep everyone focused that we're not winning everywhere, that there is still pain and suffering, real pain and suffering across our country. In Mississippi, there's a state law that says that gay and lesbian couples cannot adopt children. That's state law in Mississippi. So we have a lot of work to do. Under Chad Griffin's leadership, we are now figuring out a way to focus in on these states where there is not equality happening at the state level. And quite frankly, in a state like Arkansas or Mississippi or more than half the states in this country, it's going to be hard to pass statewide laws for lots of reasons. I'm going to try not to be too partisan, but for lots of reasons. And usually the leadership, not necessarily the mainstream members of a party, is the leadership that is out to get us. And so what can we do? And Chad has put resources into us now focusing at the municipal level, working in cities and counties across the country. So we were in San Antonio, Texas, one of the largest cities in, our, in, the, in the nation. And we put organized in San Antonio and worked with the mayor and found a way to get a non-discrimination ordinance passed in San, in San Antonio last month. That was hard strategic work, but HRC took our multi-million dollar budget, this national organization, and we focused like a laser beam in San Antonio. And what are we doing this coming year? We're gonna go to Jacksonville. We're gonna go to Fayetteville, Arkansas. We're going to Jackson, Mississippi. That's what we're doing next, is going to these cities in America where there's still not equality. So what I wanna leave you all with is a joyous celebration of where we are, to let you know how proud we all are of what HRC has accomplished, thanks to supporters like you and others, but to let you know that the job is not done. And we are not going to be done until there's equality everywhere for everyone. That is our mission. I want to say thank you for your support and keep it up. Thank you. <laughs> Oregon is hopefully going to be the first state in our country that actually goes to the ballot affirmatively to repeal a marriage ban that was passed in 2004 and replace it with a marriage law. They're collecting signatures now. HRC is part of a coalition in Oregon and we are helping to collect signatures. If they collect over 160,000 signatures by June of next year, it'll be on the ballot. Again, first state in the country, hopefully, to vote to repeal a marriage ban and replace with marriage. That would be 2014. And what I'm very excited about Oregon, for this crowd at least, is to let you know again these relationships. What HRC is doing, as many of you, you know, thanks to Dina Fadas and others, is we are working with corporate America. And we are working with corporate America to mobilize corporate America strategically to come out in support of certain laws that are coming forward, either the Employment Non-Discrimination Act or even marriage laws. And in Oregon, one of our HRC organizers actually worked with Adidas. And Adidas came out last week and announced their support in Oregon for the marriage equality uh, law in Oregon. And that's huge because that's where Adidas USA is headquartered in Oregon. <laughs> So again, it's how HRC is being smart and strategic and using the resources, and I wanted to inform you of that. So where are we going from here? Everything's wonderful, you know, another state, another state, another state, it's just fabulous, right? Coming up, it's just great to drive and take the train past New Jersey and feel differently about New Jersey because we've been married there now. I'm a New Yorker, right? We all know. So. Um, but each state is unique, and each of these each of these states really is not easy to do, and I can't talk about them at length, but I've worked in a lot of these states, and I want you to know that Winning marriage equality in the state is not easy. It's not easy for a legislator to vote yes, especially for a Republican legislator to vote yes, because they're really threatened with primaries. HRC does a lot of strategic work to make it as easy as possible for these legislators to do the right thing, and they work really strategically and win in the ballot box when no one thought we were going to win. We were four for four last year, and HRC was the largest investor in all of those campaigns. So a very smart strategic. What I want to share with you is that while you are here in New York, and there's 13 other states that have marriage equality now, as was mentioned before, we sort of are in a, a world where it is two Americans. There are all these states where we have equality, and you can walk down the street with your partner, you can get married and all that. But there are states still in this country, in the United States of America, where if you put a picture of your partner on your desk, let's just say you live in Cincinnati, and you go and get married in New York, and you come back and you put the picture, your wedding picture on your desk at work, you can be fired 
because of that picture on your desk. And so HRC has to find a way to take the energy and the excitement of our victories, mostly on the coasts, and now, you know, in a little bit in Minnesota and Iowa, and soon to be Illinois, we need to take that energy and somehow keep everyone focused that we're not winning everywhere, that there is still pain and suffering, real pain and suffering across our country. In Mississippi, there's a state law that says that gay and lesbian couples cannot adopt children. That's state law in Mississippi. So we have a lot of work to do. Under Chad Griffin's leadership, we are now figuring out a way to focus in on these states where there is not equality happening at the state level. And quite frankly, in a state like Arkansas or Mississippi or more than half the states in this country, it's going to be hard to pass statewide laws for lots of reasons. I'm going to try not to be too partisan, but for lots of reasons. And usually leadership, not necessarily the mainstream members of a party, is the leadership that is out to get us. And so what can we do? And Chad has put resources into us now focusing at the municipal level, working in cities and counties across the country. So we were in San Antonio, Texas, one of the largest cities in, our, in, the, in the nation. And we put organized in San Antonio and worked with the mayor and found a way to get a non-discrimination ordinance passed in San, in San Antonio last month. That was hard strategic work, but HRC took our multi-million dollar budget, this national organization, and we focused like a laser beam in San Antonio. And what are we doing this coming year? We're gonna go to Jacksonville. We're gonna go to Fayetteville, Arkansas. We're going to Jackson, Mississippi. That's what we're doing next, is going to these cities in America where there's still not equality. So what I wanna leave you all with is a joyous celebration of where we are, to let you know how proud we all are of what HRC has accomplished, thanks to supporters like you and others, but to let you know that the job is not done. And we are not gonna be done until there's equality everywhere for everyone. That is our mission. I wanna say thank you for your support and keep it up. Thank you. sponsors here in the room tonight, and we thank all of you for your support. You can see signs on the tables with our 2003 sponsors, and we especially want to thank a few firms who have already committed to support HRC's gala in February 2004, including Pfizer, GE Capital, TD Bank, Hunter Douglas, Credit Suisse, Time Warner, Diageo, and Alston & Burke. Thank you all.